that they do this by seeing hit her again. Boy, she must have been real mean to you. If I were her, I don't sleep with you or not. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> the natural man is limited to information gathered by the five senses, and the natural man by his senses cannot receive or know the things of God because God is spirit and can only be known via the spirit. Look at look at First Corinthians. <laughs> First Corinthians. Chapter 2. Verse 14. But the natural man, the man of body and soul, who has only the five senses, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The word receiveth is the word decomite. Cannot spiritually receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Well, look at it. They are first of all what to him? Why? Because he can only know that which he can see, hear, smell, taste, or what? Right. You talk to the natural man about prayer, for instance, and God's answer to prayer. He cannot believe this is true because it's what to him? Foolishness, because he can't put it in a test tube. He can't see it. He can't hear it. He can't smell it. He can't taste it. He can't touch it. It's foolishness unto him. Neither can he know. He cannot know the things of the Spirit. He cannot know. And if he cannot know, then what? He cannot know. Well, then why, why believe all this tripe they pass out? Only because we have not known that they cannot know. We thought they could know. We thought all these ideologies and all this stuff that was being passed out was something that really worked out. But if they worked it by their five senses, they can't know God, for God is spirit. They cannot know. This is why I do not get upset when a scientist, or I read someplace that a scientist said there is no God, or that he says, I believe there are peoples on all these other planets. I believe in all. I never get upset. You know why? Because the Word tells me, gives me my guidance. That man cannot what? Know God or the things of God. I know that. Then, if, therefore, I have peace, I have quietness, I have a serenity. I don't get all shook by what goes on in the world. Then it says, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned. To know things from God who is spirit, you must discern them how? Spiritually. To know things that are in the senseless world, you can analyze. You can never analyze things that are spiritual. Spiritual things must be discerned. Ascertained is a good word, too. Things in the natural realm may be analyzed. You can take something into a laboratory and by analysis, by your senses, you can analyze that. But you cannot take love into a, a laboratory and analyze it, or light, or peace, these kind of things, because those are spiritual matters. Things of the spirit must be known via the spirit, even like things in the natural realm must be known via the five senses. Look at First Corinthians, first chapter, verse 21. Listen to this. For after that, in the wisdom of God, what kind of wisdom is that, spiritual or natural? You see, the wisdom of God is spiritual wisdom. The world by wisdom, what kind of wisdom is that? Natural knowledge or five sense knowledge wisdom. Knew not what? God. See it? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that do what? Believe. All right. In Romans, whole sections of the word of God will be clear to you after tonight. If you just read them and study them in the light of these two types of knowledge. Spiritual knowledge or natural knowledge? Now, in Romans chapter 8, there is therefore, verse 1, now, there is therefore now, now means what? Now, no condemnation, no condemnation. 
to them which are in whom? Christ Jesus. Is this the new birth? Nope. Nope. No a thousand times no. Christ in you is the new birth. You in Christ is your walk, your fellowship. They use this as an evangelistic text to get people saved. It's impossible because it isn't talking about getting saved. It's talking about after you're saved. See it? People read it again. There is no condemnation to them which are where? In Christ Jesus. When he comes in, he takes all the condemnation spiritually. But what about your mind? What about your background? What about everything else you have done? That condemnation will still be there unless you are where? In. And how do you get in Christ Jesus without the renewed mind? You don't. And to have the renewed mind, you must know the word. And so as you build the word in here, to the end that you are in Christ Jesus, you have no condemnation now remaining. And then it, it adds, who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Right. To walk by the flesh is to walk by your sense knowledge. To walk by the spirit is to walk by what? Revelation. By the spirit. Uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in some of the Greek and in the Aramaic text, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit are omitted. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and what? The law of sin and death is the old law of commandments, doctrines of man and so forth. The law of the spirit of life, there's the law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh because of the five senses, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, five senses, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, in the category of the five senses. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh according to the information of the five senses, but who walk after the spirit according to the information gathered by the, five, by the spirit. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh, those who get their information by the five senses, do mind, are obedient to the things of the flesh or the five senses. Why, class? Because you cannot be obedient to anything but what you're studying and what you're believing. If you're getting your information via the five senses, you will automatically have to be obedient to them. But they that are after the Spirit, who get their information via the Spirit, the revealed Word of God, direct revelation, which go, starts where the Word terminates, those, they're going to walk by what? The Spirit. See, you have the two walks. You're either walking by your five senses or you're walking by the Spirit. You have freedom of will. God's Word is available. You have freedom of will and you determine whether you're going to walk by the five senses or whether you're going to walk by the revelation of God's word. Look at verse 6. For to be carnally minded, to be carnally minded is to be sense knowledge minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. Why? Because the carnal mind, the mind of the five senses, is enmity, is enmity against who? Boy, oh boy, and we used to believe that the sharper a man, m man's mind was, the greater a glory that man was to the Lord. The Bible says just the opposite. The natural man, the sharpness of a man's mind, via the five senses, that man is entirely, everything he does is enmity against God. This is why the brains have built the kind of system and the kind of thing in our society which absolutely opposes God and contradicts him. Usually the smarter people are above the ears, the wickeder they are. Unless they get born again of God's Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and renew their mind on the Word. That's the only salvation class. What verse am I here? Okay. Seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now watch it. 
for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed what? Can be. It cannot be. Because the carnal mind, the five senses mind, will never be subject to God. He'll always be figuring out how he can play God and what he can do to, to, to promote the cause. So then, verse 8, they that are in the flesh, those who walk by their five senses cannot what? So why don't we quit trying? Why don't we quit trying? That's what I meant when I was talking to you this morning, Wayne. Yeah, about last night, wasn't it? Was that you? Talk to somebody. That's you. See? You understand a little better now? Though they, they are in the flesh, cannot what? Please God. Well, you can wave holy hands to your blue in the face. There's nothing holy about those hands except that they're unholy. That's the only holiness about it. You can't please God that way. Well, quit trying. Like I told you a hundred times, I didn't write the book and I didn't die for you. This is his word. This is his will. Now, but ye are not in the five senses, walk by the five senses, but by, in the spirit or by the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell where? In you. But if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he still belongs to him. The word says he is what? None of his. You see how this all unfolds when you understand body, soul, and spirit form made and created? And that when man lost his spirit, he still was a man, but he was just a natural man, a man of body and soul. And that things of the spirit can only be known via the spirit like things in the natural world can only be known via the five things. Look at Galatians. We've had this before, but now it will really be meaningful to you. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, I guarantee you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. 